Hey everybody, this is Birch, and we've got uh, kind of an interesting viewer question here. Uh, they're all interesting. I don't, I don't mean by that, but I've thought about this myself uh, quite often. Which uh, this this question I think applies to some people, definitely not all people. And you kind of kind of I think you can immediately know when it's uh, applying to like it, it's not subtle of who this applies to. You'll see what I mean. Um, the question goes like this, uh, your video about the frustrating marketing that goes on with comics brought up something that's been bothering me for quite some time now. Why is it that comics, uh, are often looked down upon in the very comics they're featured in? I'm reading Robin and Joshua Williamson has Damien into reading manga. I get it. Manga is popular, but why not have the character into comic books? Feels like a wasted opportunity to me. It would be interesting to see a character enthusiastic about comics, and hopefully that might spark some enthusiasm in readers to read more comics. Instead, more often than not, comic collecting and even casual reading is often saved as a negative trait for bad guys or badly veiled representation of incels, or nerds, in fairness. Uh, I remember some X-Men comics uh, showing up in the movie Logan, and instead of the film running with an opportunity to promote the very medium that spawned the character, they had the character say something like, these things never get that shit right. Which is certainly not something that would get me into a comic shop after the credits roll. I don't know if these creators feel some kind of overall self-loathing or some carryover uh, from when people felt ashamed in reading comics, but the only comic I remember showing comic uh, collecting in a semi-positive light was Kick-Ass. Um, if you can call uh, Kick-Ass's comic-inspired heroism, uh, that proved to be quite a problem for him in the long run. Personally, if there are more places in comic books and their adaptations that look to comics more positively, it might have an equal positive effect on sales. Crazy theory? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, so... Like I said at the beginning, I think that there's some people who this definitely applies to. Um, I do think that there are some creators in comics who uh, feel like it's a uh, it's it's the first step on a mini step journey, and it's a lousy step. It's the it's the crappy step that they have to get through. And I also think that embedded still in people's minds is the idea that comics and comic collecting and that whole kind of culture is overly nerdy, kind of embarrassing, you know, bad, and I, there's definitely some people out there who have that. I, I, I've heard firsthand uh, creators who espouse those kinds of things, like uh, look at these cosplayers. It's just it's a nerdy thing to me. Um, I don't really like to go into a comic shop because it just screams like basement dwelling people. I've heard that kind of thing from people who are creating the very comics that are being consumed. Uh, but I, it, it is important and, and critical to call out that there's plenty of other comic creators, and I would argue more comic creators. Who feel the opposite. And the reason being is you don't stay in comics, uh, you know, to be rich. Some people, you know, are able to make money, but it's not like if you're setting out to what's going to, you know, do the best for you uh, financially, you wouldn't say, well, the path to being a multimillionaire is definitely comics. So a lot of people who are in comics are in it because they love it. They're in it because, you know, they really do respect, admire, and, and appreciate this thing that they're in, uh, comics. And, I, I, you know, so it's important to note that, that lots of those people do absolutely exist. And that is definitely a, a big part of comics, is a love for comics. But you're right in the sense that, and I think it's not always that the person's embarrassed, uh, but you're right that you, you open up comics and more often than not, they portray the comic shop and the comic retailer and the people in the comic shop as just bizarre, awful people. Um, you know, and it, sometimes it's meant for comedy. Garth Ennis and the boys uh, had a comic shop and it was a way to pass information back and forth. And they would, you know, do stereotypical things of both the, uh, the comic shop owner and also the readers made it, it, it come across very unfriendly. Uh, not like a place you'd want to be, not like, uh, you know, anything you'd want to participate in. And, you know, so, you know, I don't think Garth Ennis has this deep-seated hatred in comics. I mean, he has a career long enough to suggest he's he's in it because he likes it. Uh, but it's 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 become kind of a go-to. It's it's the, 
it's the way when people want to portray comics, they're like, well, this is the way you do it. You portray it like this kind of dirty, overstuffed, packed shop and these anal retentive people in there buying comics. The comic shop owner is a grossly obese, uh, you know, just proprietor of, uh, it's kind of rude and, and insensitive to the customer's needs and everything else. And, you know, you go into lots of comic shops. That's not what you see. Um, I'll be honest. I, you know, and I've, I've been to a bunch of comic shops recently. Um, I haven't seen a massively fat comic retailer in a long time. I, you know, I'm just saying, you know, yes, including looking at myself in the mirror. I'd like to think that I'm in decent shape, but a lot of that's just, it's a, it's a stereotype that doesn't really fit anymore, but um, it's one that's so pervasive that it's, it becomes easy. Why do people use stereotypes? Well, because they can just say, hey, you know, we want to portray a comic shop. And so we'll just put out things you visually kind of think represent a comic shop and, you know, you're, you'll be there with us. So you'll like immediately you'll, you'll be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's what I know. That's that's familiar to me. Um, it's 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 not correct, but stereotypes often aren't. Uh, and I, I think that there's there's a lot of that goes on. I think I just think there's a lot of people who, you know, they, it, it's not that they don't care. It's just that they they're looking for kind of the cheap representation of a comic shop or a DMV or a police station or a library, whatever it is. You know, again, I, when was the last time you were in a library? And there was an old, ancient, granny-looking woman sitting behind a desk telling people to be to shush. I mean, does that is that really happen anymore? I, I don't think so. Um, I'm sure there's some out there. Everybody in the comments can can put them in. But that just it's not how it actually is. And I don't think it's because you have a bunch of kind of self-loathing, you know, writers who secretly hate libraries or hate comics. I just think it's it's shorthand, if you will. But the other part of your question, which I think is is very true, is I, there is this odd kind of insecurity about working in comics that does infect people. And I think there are writers that you've seen who, who have that insecurity. I think that it somewhat explains why people at times lash out and why you get such aggressive kind of social media behavior out of uh, creators. It's because, you know, there there's this built-in kind of chip on their shoulder. They, they believe that, you know, the world is looking down on what they do, that, that their work is not as important, not as interesting, not as relevant, not as, you know, useful to society. And so, therefore, they... You know, they, they react strongly, stronger than normal, because they're used to being called out on it. I think that that definitely happens, and I think there's a bunch of behaviors that kind of get explained that way. Um, you look at some of the goofy, over-the-top kind of, you will respect me, you need to tweet at me this right way. If you say something negative, you shouldn't at me, or I will, you know, I that that's rude. I'm just this very hyper-tense view to me always comes across as baseline insecurity. The people who are most comfortable with working in comics, they don't spaz out on social media all the time. They just, they're, they're happy with where they are. They don't feel the need to justify being in comics as being as important as other jobs. When you're in the entertainment industry, the reality is comics, movies, music, whatever it is, uh, none of that is strictly speaking essential. You know, you're not providing food, power, and water. You're not providing life critical services for people, but you, you don't need to. That's not what makes life relevant in 2022. Back in, you know, 1800 BC, yeah, you know, those those kinds of jobs <laughs> were a lot less relevant. Today, I, you know, we've got a big culture, a big society. I mean, you can get all meta about it and start talking about how entertainment helps ease kind of our psychological burdens of, of you know, living in modern society, everything else. So maybe it is critical, but the reality is you, you don't, you don't have to have this chip on your shoulder. And I've said this to creators and, and to writers and artists that like, Hey, you know what, what you do is really cool and people love it. That's enough. It doesn't need to be bigger than that. You don't need to get a job at Scholastic because that's going to somehow make your, your life more meaningful. It doesn't work that way. You can just, you know, be, be happy with where you're at because you achieve something cool. But I think I, 
what, what we're describing here, I think, drives a decent amount of behavior. I, I think there is a decent amount of, of, particularly kind of the lash out behavior that is a result of feelings that, you know, they're embarrassed. They're, they're, they feel like they're not in a good enough system. What's funny about this video is that um, a decent amount of creators will listen to it and go, I have no idea what he's talking about. That makes no sense to me. <laughs> and sure, you're comfortable with your yourself. And probably if you're comfortable with yourself, you surround yourself with other people who are comfortable with themselves. And so you're, you're hopefully not seeing much of this. And then I think there'll be another group. It's like, well, easy for him to say, but, uh, you know, when, when are we going to get invited to the movie premieres? When are we going to be you know, thanked in the credits uh, up front in a comic? When are we going to have more ownership? And it's, it's that almost, uh, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy that keeps a lot of things exactly where they are. But it's a good question. Um, I do think, you know, once you start to see that aspect of it, once you start to see the insecurity uh, kind of really poking through, then it, it, it starts to explain a lot. And then you, you tend to have, if not mercy, pity, I think, which uh, just on, on some of this stuff that just, you know, when it all, when it feels all very rooted in insecurity, it's hard to get too wound up about it, at least for me. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.